Hi everybody, Chris Courtney here for New Pragmatic. In this short video, we're going to spend some time working with color in Figma. If you're just getting acquainted with Figma, know that by creating any shape, you will activate the properties panel. And over here in the properties panel, we have now we now have access to the fill and stroke properties. The fill property controls the interior of the shape, while the stroke property applies applies color to the exterior of the selected item. Both the fill and stroke properties have their own color picker. The color picker can be utilized a number of different ways to impact how color is being displayed on a selected shape. In the upper left, there is a drop down that gives you not only the ability to apply solid colors, but the ability to apply assortment of gradients as well as images to a selected shape. To the right is the blend mode. And blend mode will determine how a color and the shape interact with other shapes on the page. Below the color palette that's shown here is the color picker. And the picker will allow you to select any color that's on the page in the palette and also allows you to select from this slider right here. Below the picker and the sliders, you have a number of, of other methods for changing the color. By default, the hex code or the six digit code that allows you to input a very specific color is available to you. Next to that is the opacity, which allows you to alter how that fill is being applied to a particular shape. You also have RGBA, CSS, which is really just a syntax specific version of RGBA, HSL, which is hue, saturation, and lightness, and then HSB, which is hue, saturation, and brightness. You also have the ability to apply document colors, which means colors that have been previously, previously used in the document, and also user colors. Here I have my C2 colors that are saved here and I can apply those really quickly as well. I'll be showing you how to pull in other assets including colors in another video. One of the most common questions I get is about the creation of gradients in Figma. So let's spend a little bit of time in this upper left hand corner and we're going to start with the linear gradient. As you'll notice right away we have a new slider that is available to us here and that allows us to control the, exactly how that gradient is being displayed on the screen. Additionally, I can come in here and change the direction of that gradient by just pulling this control in the direction that I desire. I can go with the diagonal, horizontal, vertical, whatever I really need to do. Another relatively popular thing to do with gradients is to adjust the opacity. By default, a linear gradient goes to transparent, but maybe that's not what we want it to do. So by changing the opacity down here at the bottom, and I'm going to change that to a RGB, or it could be a hex as well. Now we have a gradient that moves from one edge to the other and we're showing like a green. But if we want to change that green, all we would have to do is come down here to the slider, or we could even pull something off of our, our user colors and begin adjusting how that's being displayed. Another thing that a lot of people like to do is they like to set a hard edge within their gradient. And to do that, all we need to do is come in and select another point on our slider and then I'm going to select down here to import another yellow and I'm going to drag that as close as I can and that gives us this very hard edge to our gradient design and then I can come in and change the direction if I wanted to and we're all set We've got one hard edge gradient. Create it really 
quickly. And this is uh, this is something you'll see a lot of people want to do with like a two-tone design, and maybe that yellow isn't what you want. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's a little bit further down here. You can come in and really customize customize these gradients as much as you like. One more thing that um, a lot of people will ask about gradients is, hey Chris, I created this gradient. That's great. Can I apply it to other shapes? And the answer is sure. There's there's absolutely no no problem in doing that. What you need to do though is you need to come over here to the style symbol right here and simply save it by clicking plus, which will create a style. And now that style is, is here. So if I come over here to the second shape and I say, I'm gonna give this a style, and it applies it right away. Now, if I wanted to adjust this, I would need to decouple it or detach the style as shown here. And now I can go in here and I can drag this around one of the more interesting aspects of these property panels is the ability to add multiple layers of colors to a given shape. Here I've added another linear gradient, but let's let's change that here. Let's go with um, let's go with a radial. Right now the radial gradient that I'm showing here is associated with the rectangle, which means it's really giving us more of an oval than a circle. If I wanted to lock that in, all I would have to do is click shift and drag inward. And now I've got a perfect circle. And then if I wanted that circle to expand, all I have to do is drag the bottom toggle out. And now you can see I've got a, I've got a circle that goes beyond the fringes of that shape. And I can then utilize the center point to move that around as needed. If I want it to then come back and adjust the, the intensity of that, I certainly could. I could even do something like this and then come back down and adjust the opacity down below if I wanted to. This is something that you might see for touch zones if you were trying to mimic material design. Obviously it wouldn't be nearly that big, but it might be something more like that. And it would likely not be white, it would probably be dark and you get the idea. Although don't go the two-tone with the material design, that's not really part of their thing. Now there's another question that often comes up with this is, hey Chris, if I, if I layer these fills together, can I save them? And you can't save them as a style per se. I can't save this radio and this linear together. Let's say this was a shape that I wanted to save. I could always make a component out of it and then that would allow me to reuse the shape as much, much as I've wanted to with this particular layered set of fills applied to a shape. So know that that option's there. So while you can't save this combination of fills as a style, you can save it as a component and then it's available to you to use. Now, if we shift away from the sandbox, make our way over here, we've got a few shapes that we can work with, whether it's simply trying to come up with a style that makes your call to action buttons a little more interesting. It's calling special attention to a particular aspect of the design, like this little arrow. Perhaps you are in a situation where you are trying to change the blend mode so you can see through, or perhaps you're over here working with something larger. Perhaps you're wanting to clean up some presentation elements on your in your design, for instance, like the readability of this text. You can apply all the layering techniques I showed you for color, you can apply those to images as well. In this case, I'll just select the image that we have. So I'll come down to image background. I will, you can see that the fill here is an image. I'm going to layer right on top of that. And instead of using linear, uh, maybe I'll make this solid and I'll just change the opacity. Okay, so that works. Well, maybe I don't want it to just be this plain uh, knocked back image. Perhaps in instead of that, I want something a little more interesting. So I'll go ahead and add another layer to it. And in this case, maybe I'll make this one, uh, maybe we'll start with a green here and we'll go to a darker green and we'll work with the blend mode. We'll multiply it down. 
where you decide to take your design is up to you. But I hope by understanding how the property panel works in addition to the color picker, you now have more options at your disposal when it comes to working with colors inside of Figma. I'm Chris Courtney for New Pragmatic. Thanks for watching.